Hey guys, it's me Katie once again and welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be one of those like formal videos since I'm actually talking to you again instead of a giant just video dump of different dives I've been on in the last couple of months. It has been a while since I've been on here actually talking. Summertime is definitely a crazy time for the dive shop industry um, because everyone's wanting to go diving and here in northern Florida Everyone wants to go spearfishing, including myself. And that sparks today's video. Today is actually a renovation video. What are we renovating? My spear gun. This is the finished product, so here's the spoiler alert for you. But this was the actual wood mahogany color before, and so I took it apart, sanded it down, um, painted it, and put it back together minus two screws that I left back at the dive shop. All ready to roll. I'm super excited about it, super happy about the outcome. Um, and it's just something I've really wanted to do for a long time. I wanted to change up my spear gun and, and change it from the normal boring wood spear gun that every spear guns are. Um, so I made it white. I feel like it'll still blend in quite well underwater because it'll act like reflection of water. Yeah, so here's the finished product. I will now dig in into a little bit of how I did that. So the biggest takeaways when renovating your spear gun from my experience, my, you know, super professional experience is that <laughs> you really want to focus on getting good quality marine bait, marine based. Okay. Um, marine paint that will hold up to the salty environment. In doing that, you want a paint that has a polyurethane base coat or top coat, uh, whichever. So I actually didn't put a base coat on my spear gun. Mine is just solely a top coat and it is the Rust-Oleum Green Top Coat for boats. I figured if it can survive on a boat, it'll be able to survive on my spear gun. So I just, I Googled a little bit, did some research, and I found that that was recommended the most was getting something with polyurethane in it. So no matter what color you have, I know they have blues out there, they have blacks, they have grays, whatever color, as long as it has the polyurethane top coat finish on it, then you should be golden. Um, now, disclaimer, um, I haven't tested this out in the water yet. I feel like it's definitely going to take multiple times before I see whether or not this paint holds up. So in a couple months I can do a follow up video depending on how often I go out spear fishing. But when I've read this paint really holds up with the polyurethane um, coat in it. So that is the biggest thing when deciding a paint. I went for something that was easy to, easy to buy. If you're wanting a custom color, I'm not sure maybe if Lowe's or Home Depot or some other paint supply store um, could mix a polyurethane uh, top coat into a current paint that you want, whether you want like the hottest pink thing out there for you. Um, other than that, when using the paint, da 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 da, uh, when using the paint, make sure to wear gloves just wear the gloves just wear gloves i don't think it says anywhere on the paint can to wear gloves but i'm telling you wear gloves that paint was the stickiest paint ever and it was the hardest paint to get off i went through three toothbrushes of just scrubbing my hands scrubbing my rings scrubbing everything that i touched to get it off and i still didn't get it all the way off so the paint is really durable. I can at least attest to that <laughs> because it's extremely hard to get off. Uh, but yeah, I personally put two coats of paint on my spear gun. I sanded it two different times um, with grades 120, 340, 600, and 1200 uh, sandpaper. I did two rounds of that to really get all of the polyurethane top coat that was already on my mahogany wood off. And then I did two coats of paint. I personally chose two coats of paint because I felt that A, after two coats, it was a really, you know, solid white paint job. And B, I didn't want to make it too thick for two reasons. I wanted my muzzle and my grip trigger to go back into place. And two, I want my, um, slit where my shaft goes in to not be too thick where my shaft would no longer fit in its hole. So that was the reason I chose two coats of paint. A lot of people chose two coats of paint. The only time I researched and saw that people did more coats was if they did spray paint, which is obviously a thinner paint in general. So just duly noted on that. 
Again, with that, you can use spray paint with just a clear polyurethane coat on top of it. So if you want to get jiggy with it, <laughs> some sort of camo or something, which I saw a lot of people do, or just splatter paint. Spray paint is also a great um, way to do that, and it'll also broaden your color spectrum. As long as you have that polyurethane top coat, then it should handle the environments. Other than that, also don't lose screws because I left my screws out in my living room, and my cats, I guess, decided to play with them. And now they are lost somewhere in my, under my couch, so I had to go get new screws. Did you lose one of my screws? Did you lose one of my screws? Did you lose two of my screws? You look guilty. You look guilty. Oh, that is the life of a cat mom. But uh, other than that, here is the video. I'll just have voiceover on it. If y'all have any questions, feel free to um, put a comment down below. I will be checking this as often as possible to help you guide you through it. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button because I will actually become more regular in posting my videos. So again, I hope you enjoy this video and here it is.